All right. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, as we examine your word today, I ask for the gift of your Holy Spirit to be upon us, to open up our hearts and our minds to hear from you and to understand your word through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is acting up a little bit, just a second. Keep that water handy. All right, today I want to talk with you a little bit, not necessarily a sermon so much, but just a little chat with you about the gospel and then about another passage. Jesus shows up to his disciples. This is the second uh, resurrection appearance that John records, the first one was Mary Magdalene outside the tomb. And John recorded that, and she came and told the disciples, but they hadn't seen him yet. And then he appears to the disciples in this particular passage. And the first thing he says to them is, peace be with you. He's telling them, it's okay, everybody. You think by looking around at the world and what's going on and what's happened to me, that uh, our whole endeavor, everything we've been working towards for three years has come to an end. But you're wrong. And so he says, peace be with you. And just like the disciples in today's world, with the way things are, and the fear that's prevailing among so many people, Jesus comes with the same message. Peace be with you. The resurrected Jesus Christ is present with us today. And so I want to talk about a passage from Peter's first letter to the church. Because if we can really understand what Peter is saying, then maybe you and I can grasp and take in that same peace that Jesus was giving to his apostles. So Peter, in chapter 1, starting in verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. <clears throat> in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So I want to walk us through this passage for just a few minutes so that we have a good understanding of what Peter is relating to all the churches that they have started after Jesus ascended into heaven. And he's writing this to all those churches, but also to you and me. He starts out in his great mercy. So right off the bat, we understand and know that our Father in heaven is a God of mercy. He's given us new birth. So new birth is something that God does and we receive. It is something he initiates and we accept. New birth into a living hope. So it's a living hope. It's, it's not a hope that's just based on some future thing, but it's a living hope that's hope right now. Something we can grab a hold of today. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, Peter 
is speaking from experience, of course, because he was there. He was there when Jesus appeared in bodily form, resurrected from the dead. And he appeared to Peter a number of times in those 40 days before he ascended into heaven. But he also appeared to another group of people, 500 Christians, maybe more, all at the same time. They were gathered together on a hilltop probably for worship and for teaching. And then Jesus appeared to them. So it wasn't just to the apostles. Uh, some people who doubt today and wonder about the resurrection think, well, the apostles just made it up because they're the only ones that he, quote, appeared to. But the truth is Jesus also appeared to this large group of Christians. And if they were just making it up, all the authorities had to do was go to Paul, who recorded that event, and say, Paul, where are the 500? And if Paul didn't have 500 people to point to, he'd have been stuck. But the truth is, all he had to do was say, well, this guy was there, and that guy was there, and i got a whole bunch of others over here. Some of them have died already, you know, since then, but, but I've got like 495 people I can show you. So, the resurrection of Jesus. From the dead. It's a fact that Peter uh, tells us about. And it's what's based on living hope is based upon. And into an inheritance that can never perish. This is an inheritance uh, that is ours. It's guaranteed it'll never be taken away. A court of law can't take it away. A greedy relative can't take it away. Uh, this is something that's ours when we put our faith and trust in Him. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation? Now, people read that and go, well, how come all these bad things are happening to me if I'm shielded by God's power? Peter is referring to our faith. God shields our faith so that we're protected in our beliefs and in what we stand for in our faith in Him. Because Peter goes on to say, in this you greatly rejoice, in this salvation, in this belief, in this hope, in the resurrection of Christ, we greatly rejoice, though now for a little while we may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. So right off the bat, 2,000 years ago, the Christians, they had to live in this time of life back then, right off the bat, persecuted by the Romans, disbelieved by so many others, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and other leaders, gave them all kinds of trouble and grief. And the Christians had to live with it. And Peter knew that because he experienced it. And he shares with us that even though we have to go through all of these things and we go through all kinds of things now, we can still rejoice because of our faith in Christ. He goes on later, though you have not seen him, so none of us have seen the resurrected Christ, except in pictures or movies, depictions of him. You love him. That's what happens when faith is kindled in our hearts. We, we fall in love with Jesus. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. There's that word joy again. Peter uses it again a second time in this passage, reminding them that our joy is not based on our circumstances or what's going on in the world around us, but on Christ. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And so Peter tells us that the goal of our faith is the salvation of our souls. And it begins now when we put our faith in Him. Not, not at the end when we die and go to heaven. The salvation of our souls begins now when we can experience the peace and the joy and the love of Christ every day as Christians right now. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, 
Thank you for Peter and his witness to us, and to John who recorded uh, the resurrection appearance of your son. Heavenly Father, so fill us with your Holy Spirit, just as Jesus gave to the apostles. So fill us with your Spirit, that even though we're suffering and even though we're going through hard times, our faith would never waver, but that your joy would always be in our hearts. And your peace would conquer the fear that's trying to take over. And that your love would always be expressed in our lives. Through Christ our Lord.